you know, you are now really acting like a broadcaster. So when do you yeah. start playing by the broadcasting so rules? When we say broadcaster, what do we typically mean? Somebody who has a bunch of airtime, which they are um, going and commissioning content for, mm -hmm. uh, from professional content creators, subject to rules that are usually determined by the person who gave them the, the, you know, the access to the airtime in the first place. If you look at YouTube, what's happening on YouTube is anybody with a smartphone can upload video content to the YouTube platform and be accessed anywhere. So that feels slightly different from a broadcaster. And we have something like 480 hours a minute of content uploaded to the platform. So there's a very different approach to sort of where the content uh, comes from. You know, we don't go to people and say, make us this show, make us that show. Now, it's true that we are starting to do some of that with YouTube Red in particular. Mm -hmm. We were going and commissioning content for our subscription service. One of the reasons I think that's a good thing is, you know, ideally, as you talk about the money, you want a combination of advertising and subscription and pay-per-view services in the digital world as well, because you want people to have lots of different ways uh, to monetize their, their content over, over time. If you actually Google uh, Google and brand safety or YouTube and brand safety, a lot comes up, right? Yeah. I mean, you get things like companies pulling advertising that has been placed al algorithmically, it's hard to say, mm -hmm. next to hate speech and terrorist recruitment sites, you know, a few months ago, mm -hmm. Google was summoned to the cabinet office over government ads that were placed next to extremist material. Mm -hmm. You know, just last week, big brands pulled advertising from YouTube and Google, Google after ads were displayed next to content exploited by pedophiles. Very early this year, we had uh, some obvious challenges with the use of YouTube by terrorists. Uh, radicalization, violent extremism, and, and terrorism. Uh, and, you know, these people, that's their, you know, the internet is their route to communicate. The challenge here is people will say to me, you know, how come you can keep, you know, pornography off YouTube, but you can't keep, you know, a, a violent extremist uh, inciting violence uh, off YouTube? And one of the issues is um, if you ask people in this room, you know, to look across a range of images, they would probably all agree what is and is not pornography. It's actually a bit harder to discern, you know, where, the, where is the line. At the most extreme, it's obvious, but you know it's a bit harder to deny the line. Also, context important. So you might screen a video within the context of a news bulletin that's fine, but on its own, it might not be fine. So it's not quite as straightforward as, as other categories. What's next in terms of trying yeah. to police this stuff? What we've um, been able to do with the violent extremist comment, content, mm -hmm. that combination of um, uh, policy and, and enforcement and expertise is something that we have already been uh, moving to other categories of controversial content over time. Mm -hmm. And so I think you'll, you'll see us do more and we will um, be more transparent about what we're doing, although we don't want to help bad actors game the system uh, over time. And then, of course, you're right, you come to advertising. And we have had instances where advertisers have shown up in the wrong place and we've uh, worked hard to try to improve the controls that they have and change the mix of the content that is accessible to advertisers, mm -hmm. but also it's given us a chance to work with and listen to advertisers okay. about how they want the platform to work. You're starting now to commission longer form, one might say more premium yeah, content. So, so uh, talk about that. What's, yeah, the, certainly. what's the strategy there? Yes, we're commissioning uh, longer form content for our sort of paid service. Uh, we want to commission as much of that as possible, frankly, from people in the UK. I'd like to do more of that uh, here because I think we've got an amazing creative industry and the world knows that. And that's why it's such a big opportunity for the UK industry. I really believe there's an enormous opportunity for original British content and we need some positive opportunities for export right now. Obviously the fake news issue has become just bigger and bigger. How much responsibility do you think Google should take for this or that any of these players should take for this? We really worry about this and put a lot of time and effort into this. There are, there are two things which we think we should do here and actually similar to what we think do we need to do elsewhere. Uh, we want good content to thrive and have a sustainable business model. And that's what we would really like to see in the television industry too. On the bad access side, God. follow the money. So first yep. thing is let's make sure that those guys don't have an economic incentive. Because mm -hmm. why is a Macedonian village publishing 100 websites about the US elections purporting to be from US newspapers? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because they can make money. Do you think you're regulated enough? We're subject to all the laws in the UK. We're subject to all the laws in Germany. We're subject to all the laws in France, and mm -hmm. we comply with them. And the laws in Germany are different from the laws in the UK. So you think, and we're you think you're regulated enough? Well, no, look, I don't think I'm any business person's going to put their hand up and say, we need loads more regulation. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we are regulated. Um, we're not, we don't have the same set of rules as a newspaper, and we you're don't right. have the same set of rules as a television station. Yeah. And I think that's appropriate, because we are not, as I've tried to explain, I don't think we are a newspaper or a television. But we do have laws and responsibilities that we comply with. And I think lawmakers rightly look at these new areas. I'm sure that we you know, will continue to have to answer questions. 
All I ask is that we get the chance to answer the questions. If we're, if we're wrong and we can improve, we really want to improve, right? We, we want to um, engage in the debate. Uh, we don't want to be, you know, the situation you often find is that, you know, uh, the people around the table are having dinner enough. You're not around the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> and uh, what I'd like us to be doing is, is showing up to the dinner and, asking, uh, and answering the questions. And if we have to go away and then make some changes, we'll do that.